Today we are going to be talking about building Section 8 rental portfolios. Folks, I love Section 8. As a matter of fact, I consider Section 8 to be the cheat code to real estate investing in low-income neighborhoods. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks, the show where I teach investors like you how to invest in real estate. I work with you one-on-one -on -one as your broker, your educator, your confidant, your friend, your shoulder to cry on. I'm kidding about the last two. I know a lot of you guys like to talk to realtors about that stuff. That's, that's not what we do here. We don't do that. No, 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 no. No, we're specifically about the money, about the investments, about teaching you how to work your funds the right way. And today I'm working with my guy, Anthony, New Jersey-based investor, brother. You already have a property with Holton Wise, and you love that Section 8 income. You love that Section 8 channel, as do I, brother. I love Section 8, and I think you're going to dig this Section 8 rental I got for you. Let's get into the details, the who, the what, the why. Why is Section 8 so cool? Why is it the cheat code? Is this deal make sense? We're going to go over all that, bro, right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. We are gonna get into the details on this Section 8 rental, dude. I dig this one. Uh, quite a bit because it's got like a value add component too, but it's not going to necessarily have to be like a rehab, okay? 816 West 22nd Lorraine, 44052. Priced at 66 grand, which is very attractive. Six days on the market. This is like a value add opportunity, and this is beautiful Section 8 money right here, folks. But there's not Section 8 money coming in today, and that's why we're going to get some some value add opportunity here, right? This is a big old house and it's in pretty good shape, right? We got a tenant already in there. They're living there. They're doing their thing, okay? It's a little dated, but it's already making some coin. But here's what we got going on, okay? We have this tenant in there. I wrote this down. They're paying six and a quarter, right? Regular month to month cash tenant paying six and a quarter. This is not a six and a quarter rental. No, 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 no. Now, this is a beautiful Section 8 cash flow monster, cash flow machine, cash flow. I don't know. It's going to make a lot of cash, though, when you put the Section 8 tenants in there. Why? Because Section 8 tenants will be paying 1050 1050 okay? 12600 a year. And then you run your fixed variable expense uh, estimates, things of that nature. You're looking to clear over 500 bucks a month, folks, right? Now. Here's where the value add comes into play, okay? If you give me this property with a 1050 Section 8 tenant in it, I'm selling it for 80 grand on the investment properties for sale show in this neighborhood, right? 80 grand all day, okay? Maybe even 85. They are asking only 66 because we currently have a tenant and they're paying six and a quarter. So that makes it not that attractive to investors. Some investors who don't know, who are not in the know, might not know what's happening, might think that this is actually what the market rent is, right? No, no, no. 10.50, right? We got to get Section 8 in there eventually. Now, here's why I consider Section 8 the cheat code to low income investing. When you're investing in lower income neighborhoods, the biggest issue you run into, the biggest hurdle you run into is finding tenants to pay rent all the time, okay? Sometimes they run into situations in their lives and, you know, they're not prepared for it, right? The car breaks down, they don't go to work, they lose their job. Uh, they freaking blew the money on, uh, I don't know, freaking new shoes or something. Like, they just, they, 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 when something bad in their life happens, they don't have savings and frequently they think, you know, not paying rent is an option. I, mean, I shouldn't say frequently. It doesn't happen all the time. But I'm just saying, like, more frequently than in non-low-income neighborhoods. That's just the nature of investing in real estate, right? And the more risky a neighborhood is, right, 
the more risk you run into non-pay. Okay, so my opinion on the whole matter is Section 8 alleviates so much of that problem, right? Because you eliminate that, right? Oh, you something happened, unexpected circumstance, you can't pay rent. Not when the government's paying it, folks. When the government's paying it, it comes in all the time. So that's our end game, right? But what we have here, we already have a long-term tenant who pays. They don't pay enough. But they already pay. They've proven to be a consistent payer, and that's the issue, right? Sometimes you're going to find tenants, you think they'll be consistent payers, and then they're not. This one already is. So we don't want to just, like, r immediately remove this tenant. That would be crazy. That would be stupid because you got to rehab the inside of the unit. It was dated to get 1050. you got to cosmetically upgrade it, right? Somebody's not going to move in to that dated-looking thing as it is. probably got to spend five, ten grand to upgrade it. We don't want to do that. No, 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 no. We want to keep that person in there as long as they keep paying, right? So I would probably renew their lease, right? Maybe bump them up to like 750 because that's still way cheaper than it should be. And then after that, go up like 25 bucks a year. Hopefully we get them up to around 1000 or so before they move out. Then when they move out, then we bring in that Section 8, right? Here's the thing. You can't look at every single rental property's tenant as – if the tenant will always be there. The tenants are important, but not on an individual basis, right? Tenants are important to your investments. Without tenants, you don't get rent, okay? But an individual tenant is fairly irrelevant to you as an investor. This individual tenant already pays. That's great. Let's ride that out as long as we can. That's a bonus. But the fact that this individual tenant is going to be paying lower than what your market tenants your tenant base should and would be paying is what doesn't really matter right collecting a little bit of less rent for a short period of time is irrelevant likewise if you were to buy a property and one specific tenant happened to be paying more than what the market rent is that doesn't make that house more valuable that's just a small moment in time that's relatively irrelevant when you look at your investment over the long haul so you got to focus on the market rents so with all that said, should be an above 80K property, 80, 85, 77, somewhere in there, right? Okay? If you already have the Section 8 tenants in there, more buyers don't focus on the fact that we got to focus on the long term. They do see that rent and they do their immediate price to rent ratio thing. So that's going to help us. But it's still, in reality, that's really what it's worth, right? So that's our value add here, right? So they're asking 66. I say we push it a little bit further, even harder, because a lot of investors don't look at the long term. I say we try to pick it up at 62. If we pick it up at 62, we're looking at a $15,000 down payment. Bank kinks in 46. And assuming you were able to get that current tenant all the way up to market rent over a course of a few years, you're looking at a long term cash on cash projection of 17%. That is why Section 8 properties are amazing, right? You can kick off a 17% return with relative consistency because the big thing is like 17%, that's great, but what if I really don't get my rent? When you go Section 8 for the long haul, you're almost guaranteeing you're going to get that rent. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.